Alrighty, alrighty. Mike's working. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, chat's open. Let's make a character. So, uh, actually, in order to make this character, I'm going to start with character creator. We're going to load up a neutral base and we're going to send it on over to ZBrush. I'm actually going to go through the process of creating. I'm doing a pair of characters in preparation for the ZBrush Summit uh, that I'm doing, the workshop that I'm doing. Uh, I should probably have more info on that. Let me see. Let me see what pops up here. ZBrush Live, ZBrush Live, ZBrush Summit. So on one of these days, I'm going to be doing a workshop where we'll be covering this uh, more in depth, but I'm going to start kind of light. So um, you can go in here and you can just say load neutral base and that'll load up a neutral body. And then you can take morphs and you can morph it all around and then you can throw it in the ZBrush, you can sculpt it up, send it back to character creator and then animate that character essentially. Uh, which is exactly how we're going to get started. I'm going to go into more of the accessory creation, more so than the body creation, but I'll give you the basics. So, neutral base character. Uh, I can turn on morphs over here, and to make a goblin, we'll kind of... Oop, hold on. Shrink. Shrink the legs down a little bit. Maybe enlarge the feet. So we'll, you can tap the feet. You can go over here to morphs. Um, we're in the foot area. You can just search for scale. There's your foot scale. You can scale it up. Or sometimes you can just grab one of these morphs and go through here and just kind of morph it out. Um, also going in here to A pose is, you know, I'll give you a little room under your armpits. You can also go through and um, if you're going to be move, you can actually, in your ZBrush, you can go through and you can move the geometry around. And when you send it back to the character creator, you can say, hey, where I move the geometry, go ahead and move the bones into place as well. If you're going to do that, I would suggest going in here to pose T-pose, doing a T-pose and kind of modifying this. So let's say this is the character we want to send over. Uh, and in fact, let's make these hands a little bigger too. So here's our weirdo character. And we're going to go over here to, we're going to turn into a weirdo character by turning it into a goblin or something. Speaking of, let's go in here to the ears. Um, there is ear scale, but there's also a, uh, so overall ear scale. And then you can also scale left and right independently. And I feel like if I get rid of this search modifier, there's an angle. And then there's also like ear elf. There you go. You can elf elf the ear out a little bit here so um hello from northern ireland i need to get back to i need to get back to ireland that was a really fun trip um to visit anyways i've never lived anywhere but my lame the states i've lived with euros um let me see if i have register now all right i'm gonna have to get links for the super summit i was ill prepared this morning uh, hey, 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 I got an early start. I didn't sleep too well, so let's hope my brain works okay. So, hey, John, you. <laughs> yeah, I had an okay weekend. Um, okay, so we're going to do this, and we're going to send it on over to ZBrush. So all I got to do is make sure I've got all my body parts selected. I'm going to go over here to go Z ZBrush. Um, you know what? It shouldn't relink. I'm going to go back to ZBrush real quick. We're going to say preferences go Z clear my cache files because I want this to be fresh and we're gonna say okay now go Z it'll create I'm gonna separate out the eyelashes and the um, eyelash and the tear ducts we're gonna say uh, we could say T pose here but I'm gonna say current pose and then we're just gonna say go Z this over oh speaking of so sorry I'm a little rusty YouTube playlist so here's our YouTube playlist here. Here's a real illusion character creator and ZBrush where I go through and take an arbitrary ZBrush mesh with subdivision history and then go through and pose it out. So I'll give you this link right at the top here. And then also in ZBrush 2023, there's some good like proxy pose is a really good tool to use to pose out your models in ZBrush. So if you want to use proxy pose and transpose master or Z sphere rigging, uh, vi these videos right here, these four videos in a row are good for that. So I'll drop that in there as well. <laughs> yep. 
Yes. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It, it, I mean, here's the thing, too, is you can, as far as, like, you know, if you mean cheating by using a base mesh, you can start, absolutely, you can start with a, um, just a, a sphere and just model your character, and then you can wrap. You can use Z-Wrap or Wrap 3, or even ZBrush. You can use ZBrush and the cloth dynamics to wrap a base mesh to another mesh so that you can still get a, take advantage of their topology with your arbitrary mesh. In fact, there's Headshot, which we may cover today. I don't know. We'll see how far we get. But uh, anyway, we have our character here. And uh, you're going to notice immediately that my draw size is a little bit weird. If you're not planning on using IMM brushes and keeping the IMM brushes the same size, all you got to do is double tap this dynamic up here, and that'll turn dynamic draw size off. Um, and that'll allow you to get your brush size to work a little bit more in line with what ZBrush does. Alternatively, if you are going to use you know, dynamic draw size, which is really good for keeping your draw size consistent while you're dropping in IMM brushes. Um, you can also go in here to preferences, draw, and you can crank up your dynamic brush scale. You can crank up your max brush size. You can also, and I hope this won't ruin anything, uh, under ZBrush, our Z plugins, there's scale master, and this should be loaded by default in ZBrush. And you can say ZBrush scale unify, and that'll go through and kind of resize your mesh, but basically it's changing the export settings over here so that when I go Z this back over, it should maintain the same proportions. If it doesn't, then ignore that step. I think it should be okay. Um, but those are your options. So we're gonna go through here, and just like I said before, I believe this will work better. Uh, if you are going to be changing proportions, uh, it will bring the bones along with the geometry changes that you make. Um, it scares me a little bit to do that, so what I would probably end up doing in real production is say, hey, I go Zia character over, uh, I'm modeling here, so exa for example, we can go in here, don't worry about adding subdivisions, for sure, add all the subdivisions that you need. So if we go through here and it's okay, I'm going to turn on X symmetry, we're going to go through and we're going to kind of, you know, define a rib cage in here and uh, put a big old bony scapula in here and we'll go ahead and have this meet around. So we're just gonna go through and start refining uh, this mesh. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time doing a ton of refinement, but uh, essentially just turning this mesh into the character that we want. And of course, while we're doing that, we might find, you know, having our reference up or whatever, we might find that we wanna make proportional changes. Um, so let's go ahead and pop out this little uh, oblique here and let's turn down our Z intensity on our clay tubes. So, we, and, and, you know, like I said, we can have a little belly in here, uh, broader rib cage, uh, skinny chest, go through here, and we're just going to kind of sketch in our muscles. So, from that clavicle uh, on over about pretty low down the arm, about halfway down the humerus, I suppose, and then back through here. Not that we want to, you know, make it this character in particular is super muscular or anything, but we can do that, uh, make it as muscular, muscular as you like. Speaking of, uh, I was just kind of moving these morphs around. I should have also brought up underneath the body here, you can actually dial in uh, entire characters here. So you can go through here and say, here's a base male and here's the neutral male and also head features in here. Here's the full head, different heads you can use, uh, face heavy, face angle. Same thing for body. There's some real good base starts. So if you wanted to start with like um, a super skinny character, uh, these base skinny characters you may have to actually download. Um, it's part of a pack, I believe. Uh, body old, body thin. You know, so you can kind of emaciate your character like this. Um, but of course, we've already go Z this over and we're in Z brush. So we can also do the same thing in here. Just go in here with your inflate brush and hold down alt and you can just inflate along the surface normal there. So anyway, all the options available to you. So we're going to go through here again. We're just using Damien standard to kind of carve out and then your clay tubes, your clay brush, your clay buildup, your standard brush are all four. Uh, so here's the, um, sorry, here's the line out. Here's kind of what would be a rib cage, but also your uh, external obliques going into your serratus anterior here. And then, but I mean, there's there's probably gonna be a lot more ribs kind of showing through here. And then a deep cut down the back for the spinal cord. And there's your C7 and your occipital protuberance. And then 
really feathery, light muscles uh, along the back here. So you know the drill. That's ZBrush. Go through and uh, sculpt in your musculature, your volumes first, and then go back through. Now, the reason I, and normally I would have it on an A pose. It's a nice relaxed pose. Um, the reason I have it in a T pose is so we can test going back and forth, changing, you know, massive proportions. So here's the start of my uh, character here again, using inflate and holding down alt to kind of go through and kind of thin these legs out a little bit here. And let's go ahead and carry. So we've got our, the spine of our iliac crest here. We'll go ahead and pop that out. Nice too. Um, and again, just a little, little, indi little indications of very, very thin muscles along the back here. Uh, your trapezius and such. And then there's your very thin lats up in here into the armpit. And then your obliques and uh, some spinal erectors back here, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going through here and we're, we're deciding, you know what, actually these arms are a little bit long. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring those in a little bit. So instead of what you could do is go in here and say, okay, sub tool, go Z all, go Z any of these changes back over. It's going to automatically drop to your lowest subdivision level. And we haven't changed that much. We've basically just done a little bit of sculpting. But I could totally go through here, go Z this back over, and then change my proportions in Character Creator. Probably the safer bet. But like I said, we can go through here and say, hopefully, go through here and say mask. And then we'll kind of pull these in a little bit here and we'll mask this and blur it out. And then we'll pull this in a little bit here. And um, you know what, maybe we'll lengthen the shin out just a tiny bit here. So we'll say, okay, we're moving, we're moving stuff around. Oh, here's the deal. If we are gonna move around the entire character, make sure you hit move multiple and then select everything so that everything, all the eyelashes and eyeballs and um, occlusion masks and stuff uh, go with it. So we've changed proportions in here. So I'm going to say, let's go Z all back. It'll shoot it over here and it'll say, okay, I want to update now. Uh, and then when we're adapting, we want to say, hey, we want to make sure we adjust our bones to fit our morphs. Current pose, fine, and we'll update. Um, and that'll go ahead and change our geometry, move the bones around, and we'll test our animation to make sure everything I've set up to this point is correct. And if not, I'll take it all back updated mesh. Let's go ahead and just put a walk on there. Okay, everything's good. And we do have facial animation. We do have uh, face wrinkles that we can use. So we're in good shape. So let's go ahead and this time, let's say, you know, I'm going to hop over here to an A pose. Um, I can still go through here and I can still modify the morph. So I want to say, hey, you know, what? let's shrink these hands down just a little bit here. Um, maybe enlarge the head even more. Um, let's see, let's go crazy. Let's take this nose and we'll make a really weak chin here. Uh, we'll thin out this, pop those cheekbones a little bit here. We'll thin out the face. There we go. So I'm basically moving around the lowest subdivision level on my model that I'm going to send back over to ZBrush. Uh, again, I'm just going to just play it safe. I'm going to select all these here. We're going to go Z back. We're going to relink because we've already linked. We've already set up the fact that I'm moving around the verts here and we're going to move around in ZBrush. So we'll go ahead and say go Z again. Oh, then I think I said current pose. If not, I can just relink it back over. There we go. So now we can sculpt like this and we're not going to be changing any more proportions and we maintained our subdivision history. So as we subdivide up, uh, we still have all of our subdivision history. So um, I'm not going to go crazy where I'm just going to load up a file that I have working and we can just move on from there. But um, <laughs> cool. Absolutely. Thank you, Oleg. Um, yeah, this is kind of a ZBrush plugin. We have another ZBrush plugin too. Underneath ZBrush plugin, there is the ZBrush pose tools. Um, if I can find it. There it is. Uh, ZBrush Pose Tools we can use too, which is a really, really cool one for taking, like we said earlier, taking your ZBrush meshes, sizing them appropriately, posing them out in Character Creator, bringing them back with the pose, 
setting a layer for every one of your poses that's labeled so that it, you can just pick through different poses that you have. Uh, very powerful, and again, I'll give you that link to It's this playlist right here that'll walk you through all of that functionality. Um, you won't get facial animation with those unless you use their base mesh. Their, I mean, you can set up your own facial animation system, but um, as far as just inheriting facial animation, um, that's the easier way to go about it. So anyway, and then you just sculpt on this thing for hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, and how exciting that would be to watch. So let me just load up something here. And in fact, let me open up my computer. We are recording. This is Goblin 2, uh, 4, skin transfer, bake, clean, 6, let's say. Let's see if I remember how to do this. And that's beat up. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to load up my character. So exact same process I just showed you. Just spend more hours sculpting on it. And then you'll end up with a character on the neutral base. One thing I did do was open the mouth. I'll go ahead and show you how I did that. So let me say file open here real quick. Um, textures, let's see, 03. So exact same process, just load up a neutral base, go through and make changes. Uh, with your morph and uh, again, I want to relink through here. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to say um, preferences Go Z clear our cache files here and then back here So I've opened up a file one thing I do need to change is I can go in here with this character selected I can say motion edit facial and I have uh, So under here you have a ton of expressions you can just plug in. You can just go through here and choose expression. So I'll do that when I go through. And uh, so here's happy and then you can switch over here to like sad or angry or disgusted. And you can go through all these different facial expressions that you can dial in. Uh, we'll reset to zero. One thing I am going to do is modify the jaw open to like 65. That way while I'm sculpting I can go through here and I can sculpt inside the mouth and fit, you know look at the teeth and sculpt the corners of the mouth and not get in the way and when I go to bake I don't get any weird normal errors around the lips so feel free to use that to your advantage um, but now I need to relink this so again this whole character here I'm going to send back over to ZBrush and we're going to oops we're gonna do this from ZBrush first so ZBrush I've got my character here make sure everything is showing that I want to send over we don't need any of my reference. We can just go ahead and kill all this. I'm not even sure if this is the right file. Basically, you're going to want to save one file in ZBrush, uh, file save as, so you don't have to worry about naming, so that you can keep all of your base objects here compatible with what's in uh, Character Creator. So here's everything here. I don't need poly paint turned on. I got base body, everything's showing. So if I now go all over, I can update. Uh, we're not going to adjust the bones, I don't think. Current pose is fine. Update, update, mouth. Okay. And this will essentially relink me. All right. So uh, we're relinked. Let's go back in here to our um, edit facial. We'll take our jaw closed or reset to zero. So now, let's make sure everything's working okay. Again, we got our neutral base body. Everything's working fine. We'll go in here to wrinkle check, dramatic male, make sure our face is working a okay. And then we don't have any expression wrinkles dialed in. So you're going to see here where the face is moving, it's fine, but there's going to be expression wrinkles we're going to add later that when you move your eyes, I guess we can just go ahead and add them now, I think. Uh, activate expression wrinkles. There we go. And then motion, pose, a pose. So, like I said before, um, 
space body. Um, so when I move the eyes up, or when I let's see, check with expressions, there we go. So when he raises his head up, it'll dial in these normal maps right here. And then when he wrinkles his nose, these normal maps will pop up. So that way, when I now go through here and say wrinkle check, dramatic male, you'll see as he moves his facial expressions around, he's going to, uh, there's going to be wrinkles added to the face, add a little bit more uh, nuance. There's also, if I go in here to content, I want to say it's under, oops, let's go ahead and pause that, actor, facial, oop, expression wrinkles. Uh, wrinkle essential. So there's realistic wrinkles and there's also stylized wrinkles. If you're doing a stylized face and you want wrinkle expressions to show up when they move their head, you can have like ripple and pocket and bevel and groove as opposed to more realistic, uh, deep, saggy, bulky, uniform, varied uh, wrinkles that are more realistic. So you can dial those in. Anyway, not sure where I was going with that, but now we're caught up to where we have our files relinked. We can go through here and we have subdivision history. We've changed the body, obviously. Um, we can talk a little bit about sculpting on this body here. And then the teeth themselves too. We've gone through and modified the default teeth. So you can bring the, send the default teeth over, make any changes you want, go through there and you can sculpt on them. You can colorize them, poly paint them. You know, you can bake this stuff out. There's a substance painter uh, plugin that you can use. I know this is a lot and I'm kind of disorganized, but this giving you a quick overview. There's a Substance Painter plugin you can go and you can export your character uh, and, and accessories too if you want from here. Uh, it'll make an OBJ with UDIMs that you can bring in an open in Substance Painter then you can go through and just paint. So, back in here. Uh, and of course we don't have to have everything on while we're working. We can turn off anything that you want. Uh, so we got our eyes, we got our head, and our body. And again, this is split up over multiple UDIM. So the head and the chest and the arms and the legs are all on their own separate sheet. Um, but that's really being handled in the other program. Ah, uh, cool. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, no, that was character creator. Um, cool, cool. Yeah, so we're basically, we're using Character Creator 4 and then uh, ZBrush to kind of bounce back and forth. And again, this is stuff I'm going to be posting. Oh, I forgot. I posted on Instagram this morning, but I'm going to have a six-part series where we do one character like this, and then we do a variant of this character uh, using the exact same thing. I usually, I actually just take this character, go back in a Character Creator, morph it around to make a completely new character, send it back over, bake that stuff out, make new accessories, and then have, get basically get two characters for the price of one without a whole lot of overhead, uh, get, you know, maintain all the skin detail and stuff like that. So um, the skin detail was transferred from, you don't have to do this, there is in Character Creator, just to be clear. Um, I can go over here, um, let's go ahead and say, um, there is skin gen over in Character Creator, so I can go into my skin settings here, Let's just do a skin base default male. So I can just add skin textures in here. We'll do full body. Uh, we can also say ignore head normal texture because if I want to keep any normals that I'm baking, you can just have that checked on, uh, which we haven't done yet for this file. But basically I can turn this into a character with skin like so and then you can use uh, character creator skin stuff so you can go in here to your skin base and you can modify uh, all sorts of skin stuff and I think full skin overall it's been a while since I've been in here but yeah you can download or you know again just basically using this as Photoshop to go through here and kind of layer up your skin or make any skin changes um, and you can also bake stuff off. Should we talk about that? Let's talk about ZBrush stuff first because this is a ZBrush live stream. So, um, I, so for this one, instead of using skin gen and the poor details that you can have in skin gen, which are all built in and all based on um, basically mask IDs that put different pores where they need to go. Um, the very robust system, non, uh, non-destructive. This one is a little more destructive. I took scan data uh, and wrapped it 
to, I think, just an old man scan data, wrapped it to my character, and that way I didn't have to go through. I mean, it's totally fine and possible, but I didn't, I didn't go through and, like, sculpt all of this bespoke. I went through and just wrapped scan data to my character just to have the tertiary skin details, uh, and then just kind of sculpt it on top of that. Uh, for scars, pretty easy. If you download the damn standard O2, you can go through and you can kind of just use this to kind of make wrinkles or just cut through and do scars. So, uh, for instance, this guy, you know, got a nice slice through one of his eyes here. We can put one across his nose and I'm basically, again, just using damn standard O2. This is going to be just like a, a very thin, simple cut. If you want to do a more complex cut, like these head wounds up here, uh, basically going through here and again just using your damn standard O2 to kind of cut through the direction you want and then maybe this is a fresher one so right through here I'm just going to kind of rub around in here we're going to set in some different layers maybe hold down alt and kind of pull up you can pull up a little skin flap here um, so you can kind of make these edges a little bit more raggedy and then as the as the um, scar starts healing you know maybe the skin starts kind of pulling across itself a little bit here and maybe it turns a corner in here so again just using the exact same brush and let's make sure we're at the we're at the highest subdivision level while you're doing this you can always drop down to like subdivision level two and go back through and kind of sculpt you know turn x symmetry back on and work on your overall volumes through here uh, or whatever you want to do and then go back up in your subdivision history and start working on your uh, skin details so just like we were doing earlier um, emaciated uh, body type, rib cage, musculature, bones a popping, um, wrinkle details. Oh yeah, and then back here to the scar. So yeah, and scars aren't symmetrical, at least not on this guy. So that's one way to kind of go through and do scars. And also some scars will be a little more like these where it's like older more healed scars or like really old healed scars here um where essentially we might go into our clay tubes just hold down alt and just kind of you know here's a, actually scratch marks too so here's like scratches across the skin that can be you know surface abrasions raking your nails across something and digging in and pulling skin along with it so just going through here and just holding down alt with your clay tubes um for that and then coming back in with your clay brush right at the top of the scratch it's going to kind of dig in a little deeper you're going to get a little more purchase on that initial grab and then as you rake it's going to be a little more superficial i think so there's your two scratch marks uh or and or old healed um scars we'll go back through with our again damn standard o2 which you can download from the internet we'll hold down alt and let go of alt and we'll just kind of have that knitting that skin knitting uh, across the surface here so just hold that alt and just gonna back and forth back and forth back and forth um yeah and that's how those were done like so so back to our original scar back here just going through and uh, if you really want to kind of open this up we'll go ahead and just kind of dig this open a little bit more and we'll put in some goopy let's hold down shift i'm going to turn down my z intensity here so again, here's our opening of our scar. We'll hold down Alt, and we'll kind of, again, pull the skin flaps open, and then we'll kind of dig back in. So I'm just bouncing back and forth between holding down Alt and letting go of Alt. We'll put in some little nodules in here, some subcutaneous, I don't know, skin fat or something. And then just kind of bounce back and forth, back and forth. And uh, you can also, you know, say you went back in here with a shoelace or something, you could go through and you could put holes on either side and then you could do an IMM brush. However, that IMM brush, if you are going to put, if you're just going to sculpt stitches across here, you're fine. You just got to remember, you just grab your clay brush or whatever and you just put stitches over it. If you're going to have actual objects be the stitches, uh, that's going to have to be imported as an accessory so that it'll be attached to your head joint. So as you're moving your head around, the stitches will move along with it. I suppose it could also be like hair if the wrinkles, if your faces, if you know, if as your face is deforming, um, you would transfer your skin weights from your face verts to your accessory verts so that it moves around with it. Now that's something we'll do later with chin horns uh, on our giant character. Uh, so anyway, just something to keep in mind depending on how you want to do your actual stitches. Or you can just do it in Substance Painter. There's a really cool 
stitch uh, along curves technique you can use. It's very non-destructive. So uh, going through here, we got our scars. What else did we do? Uh, teeth marks, kind of weird to look at for reference, but you can certainly, let's turn off our lazy mouse for a standard brush. We'll crank up the Z intensity and basically there's going to be now bite marks go in like a half circle and depending on the teeth of the character it might be all over the place you know I'm assuming he's getting bit by other goblins so teeth are um, little uh, not a, I don't know interesting teeth uh, so we'll go through here and we'll begin to do our two two half moons here and then uh, hey, this is just standard brush stuff we'll drop our Z intensity back down and we'll kind of inflame the area around the bite mark here and again you can paint this stuff in later so we'll kind of inflame it up with our standard brush or our inflate brush whatever makes the most sense um, these little holes back to our Damien standard brush you can just kind of dig in just kind of just rotate around and it'll kind of just pop up a little hole like this and then you can go through and then you can just kind of dig in a little few crusties on here or something like that um, I'm not sure what that is uh, scraped arm here this is just skin that's been kind of scraped off and then there will be you know little platelets that show up to heal your your wound at the edges there we can kind of gum that up uh, wrinkles let's drop down to like set division level four uh, we can enhance these a little bit just by going into our pinch brush going in here to elasticity cranking up our simulation iterations we can use cloth um, we're over the amount of cloth or simulation points we're allowed to use but I can just isolate this area now we're under it and now when I go through here I can actually use uh, cloth simulation to add some wrinkles or to enhance wrinkles that are already there so I'm just going to very lightly use my standard brush in fact let's go up to setting level 5 and then again we'll go back in here with our damn standard O2 we'll go through and we'll just kind of use this to cut in some very wrinkly elbows which you know as the arm bends you're gonna lose those wrinkles so maybe not this would be more of an expression wrinkle too where it's like when my arms extended give me these wrinkles and then when I collapse my arm or when I flex my arm it'll smooth out because you don't want this necessarily built in but uh, I'm gonna build it in anyways so we're gonna go through here we're gonna use our pinch brush and again just kind of tap you can use this to kind of enhance you know the wrinkles on the side here a little bit um, same thing with the back of his butt here. Let's go sit in level four. And his back wrinkles here. Now, so let's go through here again. Just put in your primary wrinkles, whichever direction they need to go. And then come back in here with your pinch brush and just kind of tap, 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 smooth. Um, standard brush, Damien standard brush, whatever you want to use to kind of go through and finesse the results. I'm looking at your reference or whatever. Uh, so we have scratches, bite marks, scars, veins. Uh, veins, I think, I just have standard brush with lazy. So lazy mouse is going to be turned on by default. So stroke lazy mouse you're gonna have you tap L to turn lazy mouse on and off there's gonna be a lazy radius of one by default if you crank that up you have very soft smooth strokes like so um, but if you turn that off that'll allow you to kind of get in here and have a little bit more uh, rapidly irregular strokes you can just go through here uh, of course you will want to enhance these types of details with color probably um, when we did wrap our normal detail or our, our poor detail, uh, I did go ahead and transfer the color. So if I do turn on the poly paint here and we look at it, I just took the scan data color map and have it applied to the character as well. So we got our poor detail and we got the color map detail. The colors themselves, I'm going to go through in Substance Painter and paint that in. So any embellishments we've made or added additions to the pre existing vascular system uh, that'll be updated and enhanced in Substance Painter. We can bake this off and use it as a base, which is what I did. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else weird. Teeth were fun. 
Same exact deal with the teeth. Bonus solo mode here. Turn this one on. And base teeth here. And so these all have subdivisions as well. So the the base geometry is what I'm sending back and forth from character creator to substance uh, or to character creator to ZBrush, making modifications, sending it back and relinking. So as I'm updating these things, I'm relinking my base uh, mesh. So I don't think I, did, I didn't do as much on the bottom teeth as I would have expected. Looking at these again. Hmm. Um. What is forbidden to do with the model? Um, you should be pretty safe. Even if you get in a bad spot where it's like, oh no, it's it wants to do something weird. Usually what I'll do, and by weird I mean it just it just unlinks itself or you close the file and you open it again. So what I'll do is we've got two versions of this file. Um, both of them with their mouth, or my ZBrush one with the mouth open. So in order to relink these back up, let's hop back in here, go to the, oops. Um, let's grab the character here and we want to do motion we don't need to do expression wrinkles anymore uh, facial profile editor oh we're in the middle of an animation let's say motion pose a pose there we go um, let's see base body character base body here um, let's add, deactivate the skin gen editor because we're not doing skin gen anymore. Although, like I was saying, if you didn't want to take this in the painter and bake off poor detail and then et cetera, et cetera, you can also add skin gen stuff after the fact. Um, you can kind of go through and layer up skin effects or you can just do all your skin stuff in character creator if you'd like. So back here, uh, edit facial. We're going to say the jaw again. I know that value is at 65 because I kept it consistent. So now... If I had two completely unlinked things here, for example, again, preferences, uh, go Z, clear my cache files. As long as your names are correct, uh, you haven't changed any of your, so subdivision level one history is very important. You don't change, um, you can't go through and like slice something or make any changes. You can say I save a copy or duplicate off a copy of this, do whatever you want to the topology and then use Z, What's it called? BZP, Z Project Brush, or the BHR History Recall Brush, to or you know project history underneath it, and these project here, project all our project history, either one, to have an arbitrary mesh and project details back to the mesh you haven't messed up. Um, that's totally valid. But as far as what you're sending back and forth here for your base body, making sure these are all the same, all the same names. Um, you have two vaguely compatible files, which these ones are. So then when I go back to ZBrush and say, okay, any changes that I've made so far, uh, I'm going to go Z all back over to character creator and then character creator will say, oh, okay, I see the same names. Um, and you can actually, <laughs> it's confusing things. I could even have accessories in here. I can make an ax, I can make a pair of pants. And when I send those over, it will pick it up as, oh, these ones I already know about. I'm going to update those. For any other accessories, I'm going to create an accessory, and then you can bind that stuff. Uh, you can transfer skin weights if you wanted to bind it to, as clothing. You can uh, parent it to a certain joint if you want it just to rotate with that, but we'll get to that in a bit. So we're updating here. We have the current pose. We're not going to adjust any bones, and we'll just say update. And then now we're relinked back from ZBrush to Character Creator. Um, so we've talked about the body. I guess really quickly... We'll talk very briefly about the Substance Painter stuff just to kind of get us caught up to the next step we're going to take. So if we're going to go through here, we've got our character here. I can click the Substance Painter button and say export character to Substance Painter. Essentially what that does is create an OBJ file. So I'll just go ahead and open that up real quick. Again, just super quick. Take you through the process. And then back in ZBrush, if I'm going to take these Let's go back to our skin shader four and we'll say all high. So I can export all of these objects. And really in this case, I would just export the body and the teeth basically um, and say exports as FBX. 
and throw this into a baking folder. So name it goblin underscore high FBX. Export these files. And then in Substance Painter, you'll say File New. And you'll grab, um, let's see, the OBJ that we created. We're going to use UV Tile Workflow. That's going to have the UDIM workflow where all the different parts of the body have their own 0 to 1 space in the texture. But you can paint across the UDIMs and bake across the UDIMs. So we'll go in here to our texture settings. Say bake mesh maps. We'll say 2048s. We'll grab um, this is actually an older one. So let me get oriented here. Uh, goblin body and teeth high. So one really important step is underneath this ID map setting, change it from material color to vertex color. That's your poly paint. So instead of ID maps, we're going to transfer our poly paint. Um, everything else should be fine. Uh, you can say match by mesh name. Oh, oh yeah, this is where we kind of ran into a little bit of trouble. Uh, when I export my painter version, it wants to put the teeth together. It doesn't have the upper teeth and lower teeth separated out, so I had to do that manually. Uh, just for now, I'll just say always, and then we'll say bake. And that's going to take our ZBrush model and transfer all the poor detail and the scars that we made to our base mesh and then we can start texturing so here we are doing the baking process so um and you can register for the sculpt off for zbrush summit cool cool uh most of my scan data i get from 1024 scan store Yeah. Oh yeah, and the substance. So yeah, they did. So there actually there is some stuff on some <laughs> some caveats here I need to point out. So for example, I wouldn't bake off. I have these checked just because they're checked by default, and I, you know, uh, we'll let this do its thing. But you can turn off the cornea. You don't need to bake there. You don't need to bake if you didn't change, make any changes to the eyeballs, and you'd want to just update the eyeballs. You can totally do that. I'll show you how to do that. Um, the head has all of your UDIMs for your body. So the standard skin head, if you turn on 1006 is the eyelashes. If you don't want to bake those, just uncheck 1006. 1001 through 1005 is the head, chest, arms, legs, something else, uh, nails. Uh, and then the tongue and then the upper teeth and lower teeth you can turn on or off if you'd like. Up to you. So again, we're just getting all of our bake maps going. I don't want it to hurry so we can get started with accessories. <clears throat> and it probably would have gone a lot faster had I turned those off in retrospect. Okay, so there we go. So return to painting mode. And now we have our body transferred here. And if I want to go through and say, oh, hey, on our layers, I'm going to make a new fill layer. And on this fill layer, I'm going to add a fill. So I can uh, go into project here to look at our project textures. So here we're going to see a bunch of numbers on here. So for example, this one has six. If I take this color map, which has six UDIMs associated with it, I can go through here and I can put this on my base color here. And that will go through, oops, sorry, that's on my cornea. Uh, don't need that. Sorry, uh, control alt tap the head here. So now I can make a fill with a fill with this as my color map. And then I'll go through and each UDIM will get its own um, associated color map. It'll just do it automatically for you. So here's my base body transferred on over. We can go through here. I'm just gonna change the base roughness a bit. And because I put it as a fill layer, I can now go through here and add a filter, an HSL filter. And we can go through here and we can dial it over. Um, now, before I do that, I might keep one version of him that has vaguely skin and then maybe duplicate this off. And on this one, we'll shift it over um, to a kind of a dullish green here. And then I can say, okay, give me a uh, black mask with a paint layer. And then I'll go over here to my brushes and we'll say dirt. 
And we'll grab a dirt brush and we'll turn on symmetry here. And then I can go through and I can say, um, oh, this is a black mask. I want to actually add a white mask with a paint. There we go. So now I can paint maybe where I want this to show through a little bit. Let's go into our settings. Let's turn on tablet pressure. So I can go through here and any areas I want the blood to kind of pool or I want to pull through a slightly different skin tone, I can brush back to the layer underneath it. So that's basically how I went through and did, you know, a little bit of exposed skin. It's not really exposed skin, but it's basically just a different skin tone on the insides of his legs here, maybe on the back of his neck, just a tiny bit here. Cheeks, back of the legs here, palms of hands, you know, just to kind of break up his skin color a little bit. And uh, exact same thing, you know, just kind of, if you want to go through here, you can just add a paint layer and you can go through here and just paint on here. So just grab a dark red and in fact you can paint color and roughness at the same time and make this really shiny. So now you can go through here, let's go ahead and turn off local symmetry. So we can go through here and you, you just paint kind of wounds on here or if you want to have your own separate, um, we can say, hey, give me an entire fill layer for kind of woundish kind of looks. And of course we should probably be naming as we go. And again, right click, add a black mask, add a paint layer. And then now you can go through here. And then as we're painting where this should go, let's go ahead and say, make that flow up a little bit. So now we're exposing this layer essentially as we paint. We're exposing where this layer is here. And then if we decide, oh, you know what? This layer doesn't have the properties that I want. You just go back to the layer properties and say, hey, I want it to be a little brighter red, a little more shiny or whatever. And then you just do that on the fly. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, color breakup would be again, just something like this. You can go through with a really soft brush and kind of just paint, you know, the zones of the face. So oranges and then um, reds and blues and, you know, like I was saying before, embellishing the veins that we've done. So this is the baked vein pattern that we got. Uh, we can go back in here with a breakup. Let's go ahead and turn off our roughness. We're just going to change the color of the skin here. We'll grab, you know what, I like to do a little sample here and then we'll just shift it on up to a little bluish. So that way, if we go back up here, we'll say turn on our flow, turn the flow down. Um, we can use this to kind of go through, and again, just kind of paint a little bit of a color shift over the veins, etc., or whatever your reference has. And then once you're done with all this, you can say file, export textures. There is a um, thank you. There is a output template you do need to download. There's a character creator template that'll set up your um, directory structure, the maps that it's expecting, the naming conventions it's expecting. Uh, whatever you need to do, you just go and select that template and then say export and you can export these textures and it'll of course export those, export those textures into a folder. And then back in here, all you need to do is say update textures from Substance Painter and then say um, select folder. Oh, I needed to have those all selected, I think. Um, it, it, should, might still, it might work. And that'll go through and look in that folder to your exported textures and then bring all of those updated textures in. And then there you go. Here's your updated textures. So now if we want to go through and show, check again, let's go back in here to edit facial and we'll say jaw open back to zero. So now, let's go in here to walk. And by default, when you're doing an animation, let's go ahead and say edit. Preferences. Show grid, there we go. So uh, by default, 
they will actually um, oh this one's not walking through the screen but through the scene but there are going to be some animations that will walk through the area if you ever want to lock them to their position just click this little lock button right here uh, lock position and that'll keep them kind of centrally located here so there we go everything's working we got them all painted up we got all his gross wounds embellished uh, he still has facial animation here Uh, there's some really cool stuff you can do with morphs. If you want to fix any of these shapes, you can uh, go back to A pose. You can head over here and you could say, go into your morphs panel and you can move your teeth around, uh, move your eyeballs around, embellish any any of your facial shapes. I'm not going to get real deep into that, this, because again, this is a ZBrush stream, so we want to get back to ZBrush. But just want to show you everything's still working. Uh, yeah, so we're back in our A pose here. Okay, sorry, go back here. Uh, cool, cool, uh, artifacts in the baking. You fix the model or just fake the normal or AO if it's small one? Yeah, uh, for the AO especially, I'll just go in. I guess I can show you that. Uh, I'll go back into the texture setting here. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Uh, underneath your channels, we're gonna add an ambient occlusion channel that puts us into that allows us to do this ambient occlusion mixing. We can set this to from multiply to replace, and then you can go through here and actually do a fill with your with your AO map. So if I drop in an AO onto this here. So now this fill AO fill layer with AO turned on is going to control your ambient occlusion map here. So if you want to make changes to this, um, I think you can paint it out or you can just paint on an AO channel and that will update your ambient occlusion map that you export. When you go in here to file, export textures, make sure that it's pulling from... Um, what would it be pulling from? AO. AO color space gray from mixed AO converted maps as opposed to your mesh maps. If you export the mesh map AO, I think that's just going to be whatever you baked. If you do the converted maps, that's going to bring in any AO stuff you've added from like skin textures or materials that have AO baked in, plus any changes that you've made. Although now that I say that, I think by changing the texture setting, to AO map, I think exporting your AO mesh map might export your modified mesh map. Anyway, um, yes, for AO, I will, normal maps I usually don't fix. Normal maps I'll try and figure out, like, hey, I open up his mouth so I don't get normal errors when I bake. Um, back behind the nose, I might go into Photoshop and just paint it out, you know, any, any weird stuff. But anyway, uh, let's get back to ZBrush here. Let's go ahead and open up one of these. talk about gear which is really what I wanted to talk about today so we've already got it all set up we've got the body with all the detail and now we want to add accessories so let me gear working one lots of Z tool okay cool excellent perfect let's say delete all so um, here's where I started so again just the base body here and then uh, I took this from a Warhammer 40k character I was making that I made a while ago that I haven't done anything with, but um, just kind of trying out some ideas, giving him a little helmet up here. Uh, I stole some stuff that I ended up not using. I, I actually ended up using a little bit from old DC Universe Online Roman assets or whatever I made for that, just to kind of put stuff on and see how it works and then modify as needed. But anyway, that's where I started. So um, let's talk about gear. So I'm going to do, you know what, let's, this is all, let's open up something a little more recent. Uh, gear O working 08. Oh, and 3D printing. That's another fun one. Okay, let's do this one. Let's talk about gear. So here is the, all of the gear as it ended up being created. So again, we started with this base body here and then just basically went through and made all this gear. So I'm going to walk you through the basics of how to make 
a lot of this. It's all fairly straightforward. I don't remember anything that was like crazy to do. Uh, yeah, let's get started. So, base body here. Actually, I'm gonna take a few screenshots so I can remind myself what I'm actually supposed to be making. So we'll do a front three quarter. Let's do shift, let's turn on perspective. Let's switch over to our green metallic. All right, so we got this one, we'll do shift S and we'll switch over to the back here. And you know what, let's go in here to texture, grab shaded dock, export to our desktop, Z grab a one, sure. Okay. Give me just a second. Oh, oh and then eventually we'll we'll put some <laughs> expressions and do some renders. Uh, that's the fun stuff. Uh, and right now I'm looking at Z grab. There we go. So this is what I'll be looking at to remind myself what we're making. So I'm going to go back to our body placeholder, and we're going to turn this. You know, let's just delete all this stuff out of here. Starting fresh. Now it's not what I end up with isn't going to be as pretty as that other stuff, but really that's just a, you know, go through and spend time making stuff. So we'll turn perspective off. We have our body here. We have no subdivision levels. I want to say it's at like subdivision level three, just something kind of mid res that has just enough detail that I can use to make stuff on, but isn't going to tax my, um, there's some teeth that I was using to sample some colors from. Kind of gross, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, let's start from the inside out. So for pants, for example, I'm gonna, I always like to keep the base body around untouched. So we'll duplicate this off, go into solo mode, turn on poly frame. We'll go ahead and turn off line so we can see it a little bit better. We'll hold down control shift. We'll go in here to slice curve. We'll hit control W, make it all one poly group. Uh, and then for pants, I want the pants to kind of hang about here. And then maybe at like mid calf is kind of where I want those boots to end up. So something a little cute in this range. We'll go ahead and say geometry modified topology, delete hidden, control shift drag over a little piece of this one, control shift A, delete hidden. Alternatively, you can also just say polygroups auto groups in your polygroup menu. Uh, this is my custom menu here. Polygroups are gonna be somewhere in here. Polygroups, auto groups. Um, so that way you can just isolate. So if you had, for example, these are all in the same slice, same polygroup here. You can just say auto groups, control shift tap the middle one, delete hidden. X symmetry turned on because these are going to be symmetrical pants to start with. And then we'll say zero mesh half, adapt to size down to zero. Of course, zero mesh is going to be underneath your geometry zero measure. Or we're just going to simplify this geo. Uh, underneath your deformation menu, there is a polish by feature I like to use. You can just tap open circle. Just tap that a few times. That'll simplify this pants out. And then again, zero mesh half. We'll turn our lines back on so you can see we're just getting new pants geometry for our character. And if we want to make them a little bigger, you can go through here. You can do a deformation inflate if you want. I like to go through here and hover over a face, hold down spacebar with my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, hover over a face, Q mesh, polygroup all, and then instead of Q meshing out, which is going to add thickness, which I don't necessarily want, um, I'm gonna Q mesh out and then hold down shift and that'll pull along the surface normal. So now I can just kind of pull the pants out so they're a little bit thicker. So kind of skin tight pants right now, but of course you can just go in here to your move brush. Now, instead of, normally what I would do for like 3D printing, I like to have um, nice um, closed meshes. So what I'll do is I'll go in here immediately with my Z modeler brush, say close convex hole on an edge, and then just go through here and close these holes. Uh, control shift tap, control W, and now I've got uh, polygroups on all sides. I can go through with my crease PG menu underneath your geometry crease menu, which is here, geometry crease. You can crease your polygroup, so as you subdivide, it'll keep those edges crispy. That's normally what I would do. However, what I do for character creator, just for weighting purposes, is go through here, and again, with my Z modeler brush, I'll go to extrude edge loop, and then start extruding in an edge, tap alt once, and that'll extrude in uh, and like an edge ring basically, and I'll just tap on the bottom here. So now I've got these in here. Same kind of deal. I do like to have 
you know, a polygroup along these. So I'm going to say polygroup poly loop. So for you, you get one and you get one polygroup. There you go. There we go. So now I can say again, crease PG, control D to subdivide, and then uh, start modifying this. So I can go through and start sculpting my pants. Now, uh, realistically, what's going on with my standard brush? Let's see intensity up. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll sculpt my pants to a certain point. Uh, my brushes are acting weird. Brush, reset, all brushes. Give me a second. Uh, but I, pro, I, I will probably end up going into Marvelous Designer at some point, um, especially if things are like, it's like posed cloth. Um, I do a very quick Marvelous Designer pass. If you want to see the process for that, I got you a video on my YouTube channel. Speaking of, Here's my YouTube channel. And then as I'm posting stuff, sometimes this is a little easier to find things. Uh, for example, for this project, there's probably gonna be one or two uh, that's gonna have all the live stream videos, all the sizzle videos, any other ancillary videos. It'll be packed into one of these slots here. So here's my art station page and you can go through here and you can, it's more sorted by project or ZBrush release. Uh, with a bunch of stuff packed in there. So it's a little bit easier to find things. So check those out. So anyway, oh yeah, I was gonna tell you about the Marvel Designer workflow. Marvel Designer, load up Marvel Designer, load in your um, character, <laughs> uh, your avatar, your character. So you can just, you know, you can put on a pair of pants. There's, uh, I forget the name of it. There's something in Marvelous Designer where you can actually go through and say, hey, I want to make a shirt with these types of sleeves, with this type of collar, beep, boop, boop. You dial in the settings, hit OK. It'll make you your shirt. You simulate it to your avatar mesh. You can even wrap it to your avatar mesh. Um, and then you're good to go. And then you just send it back and theory mesh or whatever you want to do. So that's totally valid as well. But as far as just a quick block out, it'll just end up being something like this where you go through and you do your compression wrinkles and you do your long, long wrinkles. I forget what they're called and uh, just make your stuff. Uh, boots, I have, speaking of project-based, if you scroll down, there is a boot tutorial you can kind of follow. Here's a boot ZBrush tutorial. Uh, there's an image here, there's 18 videos you can follow along, or this image, and I'll walk you through that. But long story short, especially for, you know, just kind of quick, easy, organic boots, I'm gonna duplicate off this body real quick. I'm going to go into um, transparency mode so I can see where these boots need to stop. We'll go ahead, you know what, we'll use a knife curve this time. And we'll just knife right through here where these boots should go. So we've sliced and diced and now we have kind of a pair of boots. I'm going to go through deformation, inflate to inflate this up. And I'm going to hop immediately into Dynamesh. Uh, let's crank you know, we can actually drag from the Dynamesh slider over. It'll pick the resolution uh, appropriate for what's there. Uh, and now we've got a start of a boot. So we'll go into my uh, H polish brush. I'm going to hold down alt and just kind of polish out to a flat surface. And in fact, I'm just going to work on one boot. So control shift drag, control shift a geometry modified topology, delete hidden. And um, then again, we can just go back to knife curve and just kind of slice the bottom off. So we've got the bottom of our boot here. We'll just kind of make this a little more boot like, like so. And that'll be kind of our rubber sole or in this fantasy world, whatever that would be made of. There we go. And then uh, control drag again if we want to continue dynameshing. Actually, what I might do is I'll duplicate this off. Control shift tap this bottom part here. Say geometry modified topology delete hidden. Zero mesh half. Depth slows down to zero. Give us some new geometry. And then I can literally just Q mesh. Call your ball. We'll just pull out a little bottom piece here. Again, crease PG. Let's make this a little thicker. Uh, crease level of one. Smooth so div of two maybe. And now we've got the bottom sole of our foot started. And then we'll just go through here. And this one is just um, Dynamesh, but I think we've got enough information here to start making this real geometry. So let's do this. Let's say we've already got our bottom geometry is totally fine. We've got our middle geometry. It looks like I accidentally painted on here. And then we've got our top here. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna put these into one, hold on all one polygroup. So year one polygroup, year one polygroup. And then for the top here, we'll use our knife again to get us a new smooth polygroup. Boom. 
So polygroups wherever I need them. Again, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. And then there we go. Zero mesh half, zero mesh half. There we go. So we've got the start of a boot. Again, we'll do maybe a crease PG, crease level of two, smooth sedative of three, uh, dynamic apply. And now we've got the start of our boot. So we can go through here and we can just start, again, sculpting our boot, lifting our toe out a little bit here. And we've got some semblance of a boot going. Um, if we want to do wraps around any of this stuff, which is what we've done for a lot of this character, um, you know, first you want to get your primary and your secondary form. So any major wrinkles that you want, any accessories to follow. Like if I want to put a big, you know, extra sewn in boot thing on the back here, I can totally do that. But first I need to get my primary wrinkles in there so I know that it's going to follow appropriately. And then all I got to do is say, hey, I want a little leather reinforcement area along the front here and along the back here. So let's mask those out, hold on, control, alt, and tap. Um, you can extract this off. And so instead of duplicating this off and doing like an edge loop mask border or something, we'll just extract this. So we'll go down to your subtool to extract. And we'll hit extract, it's a little thick. Take our thickness way down. There we go, a little better. We'll say accept, control drag, and now we have uh, little baby extracts. Um, I like to do a quick uh, deformation, like we did deformation polish by feature, just tap that a couple times to smooth out those borders. And then um, you can do zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, keep root smooth groups down to zero here, and then you can just zero mesh this. In fact, we really only need the front ones here. So I'm going to say control shift tap just these front polygroups here, delete hidden, zero mesh half, zero mesh half. So this will be the start of our leather reinforcements, Q mesh polygroup all. We'll Q mesh this back, but we got to go back here to display properties flip. And then uh, if we want to put a little bead or border around here, we can say Q mesh polygroup all, and then Q mesh this out. Or we could even say, let's do this bevel, edge loop complete, we'll put a little bevel in here. And then we'll say inset polygroup all legacy, polygroup all legacy. I don't know what I did here. And then Q mesh polygroup all, we'll pull this back. And then maybe insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. Now, you may be thinking, oh, cool, you must do this. Uh, I really don't. I don't like doing this type of thing. I'm just showing you how something could be done. But instead of doing this, because uh, what's going to end up happening is you can put this on there and it looks fine. But then when you want to go and sculpt across this, you're going to be a kind of limited. First of all, I hit D for dynamic. This isn't real. This is dynamic subdivision. So if we do dynamic here, so D, shift D to turn it off, D to turn it back on. Uh, this is giving me a preview of what it would look like. However, if I try to go in here and sculpt on it, you're going to see it's not really sculpting at the resolution that it's showing me because it's just a preview. If you want to make it real, dynamic apply. And then now we can go through here and we can actually sculpt on real subdivision levels. Um, but again, you got a lot of geometry packed in these small areas. So what I tend to do is I might have two versions of this. One where I'll extrude out um, and maintain this size where everything's nice, even in quads. And then I'll go through and project uh, project history like another version of this where I'll get that detail kind of projected to a nice sculptable mesh, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. It just keeps things a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, a little more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Predictable. So anyway, here's our reinforcements here. If I want to put some studs on here, um, you know, first I want to make sure this is kind of out away from my foot here. And then if I want some metal reinforced something or other, I can go through here maybe with my clay brush and we'll switch this over to drag dot and we can just focal shift down a bit, intensity up a little bit, and we can just give our object, let's say focal shift down to like 100, and not down that far. Just give our um, stud a little something to kind of fit within and they're all the same size, so I can go through here and when I do my IMM brushes, they'll I know they'll fit. Uh, so we'll go into solo mode here. So I want to put a little metal thing in here. So if I go to my custom 
menu here, I have a rivet I can just grab. Of course, you can just go to BI Brush Insert, IMM Model Kit, and I think there's some rivets in here you can grab. Let M on our keyboard. Uh, fasteners, you can grab one of these fasteners, I suppose. Uh, now, in order for this, it, in order for you to draw out something, uh, you have subdivision history, so it's not going to let you draw on this one. However, we do have in our scene this star buried in the middle of the scene, just out of the way. Uh, I always like to keep one of these. Number one, it catches the name. If I go to Tool Save As, it'll save this subtool as that name. Number two, it allows me to say, hey, I can turn on X symmetry if I want. Um, and use IMM brushes, or in this case, I don't need X symmetry turn on, but I am going to use this one selected. Uh, go in and grab my shape, and then when I say, let's turn off everything except for these two here, and I want this rivet to kind of fit within this object here. Um, let's see. Is it not going to let me? Is it going to make a fool out of me. Let me see here. Transparency. Right. 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 <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so I go through here, I can hold down control and it'll snap to my brush size. So, you know, tap S and then dial in your brush size or just go up here to change your draw size. Uh, and then, why is it doing that? This is a new one for me. So yes, I see you, I see you, okay. So again, just holding down control, uh, we'll snap it to the brush size. Uh, also, if you want an embedded more, just go in here to depth, and just crank that depth down a little bit so when you, as you drag this out, it'll kind of embed a little more, it'll keep them all consistent, and now, you know. Now, these IMMs are still stuck to this, I'm gonna say grab this one, say split hidden, so they're on their own subtool now, and now I can just kind of work around these. Again, I can hit D. Come on. Okay, I get it. Thank you. Um, I can hit D for dynamic on these. I can hit, uh, if you want to move these around, these are all uh, different poly groups on all the sides. So unfortunately, I can't hit W and control tap. Uh, but I can do that if I say poly groups, auto groups, and then if I control tap any of these, it'll unmask just that one. I can move it around. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can say draw size of one with your move brush and then uh, turn on topological. So just go in here to auto masking, turn on topological, and then you can just move around individual objects. You can just go through here really quickly and just kind of push them around. You can also use a really big draw brush size and it'll probably do the same thing, but anyway. Shoes, straps, reinforcements. Um, yeah, speaking of, if I wanted to say duplicate this off, say delete lower, control shift, grab a slice curve, hold down spacebar, turn on brush radius. We'll go through here and we'll do a couple rounds of this. So control shift tap these that we left behind. We'll say delete hidden. We'll duplicate this off. We'll go back to this one. I'm going to roll back through my undo history. And we'll do the other side. Control shift slice curve. Two, three. Delete hidden. We'll go ahead and merge these down. And we'll say zero mesh half. Depth size down to zero. Smooth groups down to zero. I'm just kidding. Zero mesh half. Half, half, half. So now we've got. All of these, let's hit Control W, make them all one polygroup. We'll say, instead of Q mesh, because of these are gonna wanna stick together, when you use Q mesh, we'll do extrude polygroup all. So if I extrude this out, and in fact, I can hold down Shift and extrude these in a little bit, we can hit D for dynamic, and because they're just cubes, as they average their verts, they'll just turn into round straps if you want to. You can also go in here and do your inflate or deflate with your deformation. Um, you can do auto groups, W, Control tap these, you know, rotate these around. Um, this is for just kind of fakey straps, which is generally fine. And then I'll have, um, let me see, hold on just a second. And then I'll have a knot brush that I can say, hey, grab a knot and put it, oops, this one. 
you know, just stick a knot somewhere in here. So these are like super fake um, options for you. God, I'm having a bad luck with that. All right, I got you. There we go. It's not bad luck, it's just my tired fingers here. So then we can go through and we can make it look like, you know, this cloth is kind of bunched up around the strap. Uh, if you ever want anything to really wrap around an object, that's where you would probably want to go into Helix here. And you can start just going into Initialize and making this what you need. First of all, I'll just take this radius out of here. Um, and even this, I can just use it to wrap. So we'll say, you know, we'll say make poly mesh 3D, go back to my leg here, insert that helix, and then we can just modify this to kind of fit. Now we'll say we'll wrap, now we'll wrap something on his arm. I don't do this one as often, but just in case you needed it, you can say, okay, I need this to wrap on his arm. So I'm gonna go in here to bend curve. This will give you a lot of really cool options. We're gonna take that resolution up just a bit. So number one, you can fit these wraps to this character here. And then each one of these control points has a scale and a twist. So you can go through here and you can scale these things to fit um, the arm a little bit better. And then once you're done with that, you can also go back in here just with your move brush. And I might be thinking, well, that's great, but this is, these are kind of thick wraps. You know, what if I wanted like a thin metal or whatever? Well, you can just use this as a path. You don't have to um, use it, the geometry wholesale. You can use it just as a guide. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, control shift. Uh, let's do a really big, uh, underneath your polygroup menu, there's a group uh, group by normals. I'm going to crank that up so it just grabs those end caps into its own polygroup here. So we'll say get rid of that pink, delete hidden. And then this one here, we'll just hold down alt and we'll just paint it. There we go, delete hidden. So like I was saying, in order to find a path that we want to have an IMM brush around, we can just hover over an edge, say polygroup, polyloop here, and U, control shift tap, delete hidden, go in here to stroke, say curve, frame your polygroup border here, and then B, C, B, I, IMM clothing curve, M, uh, yeah, grab whatever makes sense and then again you're just going to use this path to kind of dictate uh, where this geometry ends up uh, same thing with the other ones too if you want to go into your depth settings you can kind of modify this to work um, or whatever chains whatever you want to make so we'll just tap off here we'll say split mass points and then we'll say so those are all on their own object here. So now we still have topological turned on for a brush. We'll turn that off and now we can go through here and we can modify that. So that's how you really wrap something around with a helix or you can do your fake wraps like we did here. Uh, pants, belts, same deal, loops, shirt, more, a lot really just more of the same, you know, like everything is just a variation of, you know, duplicate off the main body, you know, I want to put some pads up here, so I'll just mask where we want the pads to go. Say great. Uh, for this type of thing, instead of hitting Control W, or doing a, you can do an extraction that'll smooth this out. Um, you can also go through here and do a edge loop mask border, isolate it, delete hidden, zero mesh half. And again, I always like to, not always, but it doesn't need to be skin tight, so I'm gonna say polish by feature, just to kind of smooth that out a little bit and then extrude polygroup all, and again, we just pop these things in here. These, these I would probably keep as a separate mesh, but for now, that'll kind of be my um, start of my uh, little, I don't even know what those would be called, pads for his shoulders. Um, oh yeah, and then straps too, because the body doesn't have uh, so in history, I can actually just turn on X symmetry, say BTO for topology brush. Uh, you know, let's turn on transparency with ghosts so we can put straps. It'll stick to the body, but go through here. So let's say I want a strap to go here. I can say, okay, just go across, strap, 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 strap. Uh, tap off, say split mass points. And now we have the beginning of this strap. It's a little thick. So again, extrude polygroup all, just hold down shift. And then that'll pull along the surface normals for those polygroups here. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and mark this top one and mark this bottom one because now I can go through here and do a polish by feature and just straighten those out a little bit. So we've got the start of a strap. If I want the strap to loop around, I can hold down Alt and Paint and then Extrude and tap Alt as I extrude and then hold down Control. That'll pop off this little piece here. And then we can hold down Alt and say Delete. And then we can say Bridge Two Holes. U to U. U to U. <laughs> there we go. And then we'll just kind of pull those out and around. And let's clean this, these poly groups up a little bit. So Control Shift, select Lasso, grab that side one here. Poly groups, auto groups, Control Shift, drag, Control W, hold down Alt. I, if I mark these ones here, I can always very quickly just say crease poly group and then hit D for dynamic. Um, let's say uncrease all, crease poly group. There we go. And then uh, D for dynamic, crease level two, smooth set of three or whatever. And this will be my you know, fold it over loop. However, uh, if I want these to be uncreased, what I'll do, like I'll keep this one creased, this polygroup up here, but this one, hold on Alt and then tap Shift to make this all one polygroup. And then again, uncrease all, crease PG. Now when I hit D, this one will have the soft corners and this one will maintain its hard corners. So just using your polygroups to kind of indicate or dictate where your geometry ends up going. And then W, Control, drag down. Uh, you can rotate this stuff around or what I'll probably end up doing is just changing your topological range on your move brush and just saying, get in there, you. Uh, dynamic, apply, control D. Um, you know, we'll put in a little thing here. We'll go back to our star, go back to our rivet or whatever. Um, X symmetry back on. Turn on L sim with dynamic off. There we go. So now, um, and then we'll just say, grab these pieces here and we'll split them off. And going back on here and sculpting or whatever you want to do for your straps. So, um, straps, what else do we have on here? This is just like pants. You just kind of mask and then extract this out. These are a little interesting. Shoulder pads interesting. Oh, there's some, there's a few more interesting things we can talk about. Um, cool. Uh, this isn't really for, uh, well, this, so this is basically like just me going through the process so that I can um, do my ZBrush Summit workshop this year where we go through and we create a character and then we create accessories and we rig and animate it and then we make a variant. Um, then we can use Headshot, the Headshot plugin to convert, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, once this is all uh, done, uh, let's talk a little bit more. There's a few more interesting techniques that I think you might find interesting. Um, that's, that's that. Uh, trying to think about his backpack's kind of interesting maybe. So again, back here, where we have our star. I'm just gonna go in here and create a cube. So we'll put on this little wooden backpack here. Um, Q, L, Sim, off. There we go, split mass points, W. So here's the beginnings of his little wooden backpack here. And we'll say, okay, this is great. I'm immediately gonna go in here and say Dynamesh, maybe a little higher resolution. There we go. And then also, let's turn off X symmetry. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift. I'm gonna go in here to our knife curve. Brush radius is turned on. And then I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna say Control Shift Alt. And I'm gonna slice through. And if uh, by holding down Alt, what it's gonna do is allow me to kind of cut through the geometry here. So I can quickly kind of go through and just create some boards here. And then I'll go through and just smooth this. So there's our boards. Um, you know, maybe a little higher resolution. Let's go in here with our trim dynamic, uh, damn standard, whatever you want to do. We can do auto groups if you want to just say, give these their own poly groups and then isolate them so you can kind of work on these individually, et cetera, et cetera. You know the drill. And of course, make these different sizes and different shapes. You don't have to start out with a cube. You can start out with the, you know, whatever shape you want or take a big chunk out of this too. You can just say, uh, let's turn off brush radius, so 
There we go. So now redynamesh these. Uh, let's do auto groups. Redynamesh these. There we go. Trim dynamic, et cetera, et cetera. So here is our, our wood here. However, one thing we did do with the wood is we put these little, we kind of wrapped this wood. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this wood is at an arbitrary angle, not a huge deal. We are just gonna have a working plane that we can put our wraps on temporarily. So we'll just go ahead and just append a plane 3D. Oops, I should have done an insert. So we'll move this plane 3D up so we can just kind of look at these two. So we'll hit W. Let's find our plane. There it is. So we're going to rotate this back. And we're just going to kind of generally match the angle. If we can't see it from the side very well, you can go in here to dynamic temporarily and just turn this on, turn smooth down, and then crank thickness up. So you can add a little fake thickness on here. Again, just matching this angle. And we'll put this in the middle here. So, and then we'll go ahead and turn off thickness, dynamic. So another thing you can do, you hold down Alt, and you can tap this object to find the surface normal, and you hold down Shift, and that'll look directly at that face. And then we can go in here to transparency with your ghost turned on. Oops, that was match our camera angle, it's fine. Uh, BC brush curve flat, and then we can go through here with our flat brush and just kind of intertwine, you know, how we want our little straps to go through and around. And then we tap off, go into solo mode here, we'll say split mass points, hit W. Uh, again, we'll just find that angle here, and I'm gonna Z scale, or Y scale in this case, back. So now we've got our little loops. We're gonna go through here with our Z modeler brush again. We don't want to Q mesh, so we'll say extrude. Polygrip all, ball. we'll extrude this out. I'm gonna say uncrease all, D for dynamic again, uh, except we inherited the dynamic properties, which are not that helpful for this. We're gonna say thickness down to zero, in this case, smooth it back up to two. So now I can have um, these guys here. We'll go to deformation deflate here, uh, and then we just kind of move these back into place. I did kind of a terrible job with my initial um, wrap but you know and like we did before you don't have to use this geometry i i'm i'm using this geometry as just kind of a quick wrap however just like we did with the arm wraps you can just use the geometry as a path um for example so again be be careful and go through and do a little better job than i'm doing but essentially that's how i ended up putting the wraps on there so we'll delete this out here um, what else did we do? Helmet and stuff is pretty self-explanatory. Um, for the shoulder pad, that was, I want to say, say so duplicate this off, X symmetry off. Maybe I started with, I probably just started with an object or maybe I went in here and just grabbed a piece of this, control W, delete hidden, polish by features, zero mesh half, anything to kind of get your first shape started. Doesn't have to be perfect or anything, just kind of a general shape. Uh, extrude polygroup ball, and then uh, you know modifying it from here. So we'll just kind of do like a little baby shoulder pad to start with. And then uh, it's a layered shoulder pad, so we've got an underneath uh, part to the shoulder pad here. And then we can just say W, um, I think I borrowed the geometry that was already on there actually. Uh, that's fine. So we'll hit D for dynamic. We'll go ahead and say crease polygroup, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, just as a start. And then I'll um, duplicate this off. I'm gonna control shift tap this polygroup at the top, say delete hidden. Uh, and we'll say extrude polygroup all, and I'll actually pull in from the sides here, just to kind of shrink this down a little bit. And this will kind of just be a little inset area here. And we can lash those together. If I want to frame this, or if I want to say, you know what, let's do a crease level of 15. I want to get a different shape on this one. So we'll say dynamic apply, delete lower, control shift. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. Um, control shift, knife curve, new shape, zero mesh half keep group smooth groups down to zero and now I can just have a new piece of geometry that I can kind of play around with and again we'll just say 
increase BG, increase level of two, smooth so div of three uh, to start with. Or maybe, you know, increase level of one will soften that up a little bit more. Uh, if we did want to frame this with some sort of metal adornment, we can say duplicate this off. You know what? I'm actually going to say dynamic apply, isolate the purple one. We'll do control shift S to shrink it down a little bit. We'll say delete hidden. Oops, delete lower, delete hidden, polish by feature. And then we can just frame the outside of here. Uh, I do have a custom brush I like to use for this. Mm. You know what? I might frame this with a piece of geometry, but let's not even do that. Let's do something even simpler. I'm going to say this is all fine. Zero mesh half, 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 good enough, extrude, polygroup all. And then um, I'm going to say control shift tap just so I have delete hidden auto groups. I just want this strip right here. So once again, we'll extrude the polygroup out. Hold down shift and pull this in, hit D for dynamic, and now we've got a little metal thing that we can like strap or twist tie in if we're so inclined. In fact, we could even put, kind of like we had here, I'm gonna say duplicate this off. We're gonna say dynamic apply. We'll put another shape right in here. <clears throat> we'll hit uh, control W or edge loop mass border delete hidden, polish by feature, zero mesh half. And again, I'm just looking for a very simple geometric path. I think this will work fine. I am gonna do a quick split right on here. So we'll say split edge and then delete edge you and you, fine. I will fix you too, bridge, bridge. Nope, ah! Um, should have been bridge edge. That's fine. We didn't lose anything. We'll restart ZBrush. And after this, uh, after I, you know, a few more techniques, we'll talk about ZBrush. Um, then I'll show you, okay, here's where we exported. Here's the texture process. Here's the rigging process. Here's how you save the clothing to your library. And then here's how you apply it to other characters. And then I'll kind of round out. Okay, so recovered Z tool. Okay, so what was I doing? Solo mode, there it is. Um, F. Bridge, edges, not two holes. There we go, control W. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we have our, uh, just our, our shape here. So one more time, just for decoration purposes, Q mesh, poly ball. We'll pull this out and then we'll pull this back. We'll hit D for dynamic and it just gives us this. Oops, Let's, looks like, oh, that's why it was giving us problems. Back here, we need to say, delete a single poly, this little sliver. You know what, let's just do a weld just in case. Yoink and yoink. Hit D for dynamic, and again, we could go through here and we can inflate, and we can deflate, um, whatever you wanna do to kinda smooth this out. We can even hit Control W and then do a polish by feature open circle, and that'll kind of smooth that out a little bit more, and then we'll go back in here with our inflate, and this will kinda be our adornment. So back to this one here, dynamic apply. This is where we can go through with our transparency and our ghost, and just, you know, give this a little place to set. It's a little soft area for this to kind of this decoration to kind of sit in and then we'll go through and we'll inflate let's turn on back face masking because we're working on thin meshes here we can kind of go through and inflate through here and then uh, we can add wrinkles and just like we did before we can go into our um, our pinch brush turn on elasticity and then uh, Let's see, pinch brush, elasticity, simulation iterations up to 100, and then any any wrinkles that we're adding, we can go through here and we can en en enhance them using the cloth algorithm in ZBrush. We'll go ahead and knock our Z intensity down. Anyway, um, all of this stuff, and then for more destructive stitching, 
Um, I'll show you in Substance Painter how to do the non-destructive stitching in here. If I needed like big, big, big stitches, what I'll do is, you know, I'll say crease level of one. So here's our bottom part of our shoulder pad. And maybe I want to stitch, you know, put big, big fat stitches across here. So um, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can just do an IMM brush with a loop. Like literally like a ring and then just pull this on and then just go through and you know here's one stitch and then control drag out another one and then loop it over and then there's your other stitch um i think in my case what i did was i duplicated this off we said uh no we'll say dynamic apply delete lower control w and then literally just went in here and said okay i want to stitch here is one stitch and then here is another stitch maybe and just went through and just borrowed this geometry of where I wanted my stitches to go and then delete hidden increase all Q mesh us out D for dynamic and then auto groups W control tap control drag out a copy and then now we've got you know little stitches I can go through and Again, dynamic apply, control D, transparency with ghost turned on, give this a little place to sit. You know, these objects are interacting with each other. You don't want to look CG. So you, you make these two surfaces look like they actually live in the same world. Um, and then, sorry, move this stuff around. So anyway, that's probably how I ended up doing the big, big stitches on my object. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and say delete all. Let's load up. Not my desktop. Uh, let's see, variant gear CC project. Let's go ahead and load that up. And we'll load this up. Okay, so after all of this, eventually you will have loincloths and water pouches and little coins embedded into your uh, little weird shirt. You have a little contraption on the back. It's like a little weird backpack contraption. If we turn off this weird backpack here. There we go. So there's like a little contraption where you can kind of loop on his uh, little holder for his shield thing uh, what else happened up here this is all the same stuff we've talked about so there's your metal reinforcements here's your stitches here's your layer just like the um, just like this over here this was the same thing just taking this geometry duplicating it off borrowing the edge loops extruding them out moving them around stitches um, these and their ropes were kind of interesting we'll talk about those For instance, okay, does this have, okay, great. So in here, we'll go ahead and just drop a cube on here. We'll say split mass points. Now there's a little bit of work we need to do with this cube. Uh, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna subdivide this up. So we're gonna say, turn off the smooth modifier, divide, divide, turn the smooth modifier back on, say delete lower. I'm gonna go to the side here, actually, you could go to the side here and say, okay, insert single edge loop and then just get rid of these extraneous loops. Um, is one way to do that. Just get nice even quads everywhere. Another thing you could do is zero measure, say half depth size down to zero, detect edges. It'll go through and detect your corners and then zero mesh it for you. So it's nice. Uh, okay, we have our shape here. So now I can say, okay, great. Well, this needs to wrap to the body a little bit better than this. So we'll go ahead and say in our gear menu with our gizmo, bend arc and we'll bend this around a little bit and rotate it you can taper it if you want whatever you want to do to make the shape um so we've got the shape now i want to put holes in it it's going to hold down alt and we're going to go through here and we're going to mark these and then we'll say q mesh poly group ball and we'll just pull this back and that'll cut through and sew them up so we'll say again crease pg crease level of two smooth subdiv of uh, three, something like this. So that's the start of it. And again, if I don't want these creased, I can just go through here. You know, let's do this. Let's do uncrease all and then crease PG. That'll keep everything else uncreased. Uh, if I want to 
make more of these. I can say W, control drag out a copy, drag out a copy, copy. Um, whoops. And you know what? Just because I'm super lazy, we'll go to uh, move brush and we'll just kind of shove these back into place. So, uh, or we can also go in here to auto groups, control tap, and then just kind of go through and rotate these around so they don't get all bendy. But again, as you can tell, I don't really care that much. Demonstration purposes only. So you take your time. You do a good job. I'm here to do a crappy job to make you feel better about yourself and your abilities. Okay, so now we have all of these here and I want to put little threads through them, right? So we're going to say duplicate this off. I'm going to say shift E. We're going to go through here and we're going to say poly group poly loop. You get one and you and you and you and you and you and you you and you and you and you oops and this one this one this one this one control shift tap delete hidden q mesh polygon ball out maybe pull in a little bit here say uncrease all crease pg dynamic whatever whatever apply standard brush again it's not like this would be manufactured in this way, but just for the overall, like, hey, I just want this to look like there's some something going on here that makes sense. Um, that's a quick and easy way to go about doing that. Mm, everything else pretty standard. Nothing else. Nothing else really. Uh, not that anything hasn't been standard up to this point, um, but, hey, but just kind of showing you a little bit of stuff. Okay, um, let's see. Um, oh, modular configurator. Yes, thank you. That's exactly what it is. It's the modular configurator in Marvel's Designer where you go through and you pick the different parts. Thank you for calling that out. I d didn't know the name. Uh, yeah, this is just uh, more of a demo thing. So while I'm talking, let's go ahead and open up... Um, CCO3, Goblin, Variant 3D Print, Gear. Or maybe I don't have it. Um, no, replace all. So here's the thing. Um, in order for me, so instead of sending this gear over, like if I was going to 3D print it, I would send this over to an accessory and then rig it, uh, transfer my skin weights and stuff. What I did was I completely kept, I kept this in a completely separate file. So turn the body off, turn this off, exported all of this as my high res files, again, with my material IDs colored into it, um, and then made a low res that I then brought into Substance Painter here. Uh, let's see, Goblin gear mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so export high res export low res same thing we did on the body bring in the low res bake now this one i don't think i didn't use udims i just use material sets so every like the helmet has its own material the loincloth has its own material the shirt has its own material shirt um if you can call it that uh, pants has its own material and then they have their own texture set here. So basically just going through and doing a texture pass. You know, you put your leather on there and your little blood stains and your dirt, um, etc. And we can go check them out in iRay maybe. There we go. Get a little bit of... And then again, this is just all... Oh, oh and we'll talk about stitches too. So for example, um, if you look at... this little stitching right around here and then these blanket stitches right across here and right across here if we switch back over to our zbrush model you're going to see we don't have any of that built in so none of these things actually have stitches built in uh, because it's so much easier and faster to do in here so for instance let's do it uh, let's find a really obvious place let's say Control alt tap here let's see if i even remember how to do this Okay, so we got our shirt layers, and for example, this has a bunch of different materials on it, and black rope, stitch straight. So here's all our stitches here. You know what, let's just say delete all these. Delete, 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 delete. 
Give it a second to catch up. Sorry. Still waiting. So, it's deleting all the stitches out of my file so I can go through and I can create curves on the surface that I'll go through and create my stitches for me. So, for instance, if I go into um, I have a leather stitch blanket set up. So I'm gonna add a new paint layer on here. I'm gonna head into curves brush mode. I've got my curves turned on so I can see them. So when I click and then tap again and then tap again, it's going to propagate blanket stitches out behind it. And if I need to go through and make a change, I can go through here and just drag this around and it'll make stitches. Now, if I wanna change these stitches, we go ahead and turn the curve off here. Um, I can go down here and I can say uh, stitching, puckering, there's, you know, you can go through here and you can change, as the stitches go into the mesh, it'll kind of make the mesh around it pucker up a little bit, so you can dial that up or down as needed, depending on what kind of, um, what it's made out of. You can change the color, so if you want to do like white stitches or, you know, light tan, make the stitches stand out a little bit more, you can do that on the fly. You can change so right now we're under the decorative category. So there's a blanket stitch that I really like. There's a honeycomb stitch. We can swap that out. You can switch it to uh, blanket, ladder, elastic, overhook, whatever you want to do uh, for your stitch here. And it'll just update on the fly. And then again, you can continue. You go back in here to continue to just kind of wrap these stitches around. If you want to change the direction, you can say, um, what are we doing here? Open, close path, toggle, center, smooth. Oh, there it is, change your direction. Switch switch the direction and it'll allow you to kind of continue from this side. So again, just go through here, lay out your stitches, uh, make the stitches bigger or smaller as needed. I think that would be underneath um, your size here. We'll change the size down a bit. So as I'm changing the size, it's making the stitches smaller or bigger. And then uh, again, when we were talking about the decorative here we can go back here to like classic and then um, turn this off so you can see so this is just the straight stitch uh, double triple etc uh, etc et zigzag so that's how all the stitches were done on this character here uh, that I can remember leather stitching yeah, I don't think there's anything else. The rope. Oh, this is, this is just cloth kind of put on here. So, for example, just fabric tiled through here. So, uh, sorry, this is such a slow file. Anyway, you guys know how to use Substance Painter. Throw your material on here. Put it to your material ID. Um... So it knows where to go. You can do faded, sun sun bleached versions of it. Uh, tile it, swap out that material. This is all the same kind of cloth material. I don't know how realistic that would be. But uh, yeah, anyway. You go through here, you say file, export your textures. You go back into character creator. You import the objects um, as accessories first. Uh, and the difference between those is you can see like the axe and the shoulder pad and the helmet basically anything that you don't want to in deform across multiple bones you just want it attached to a single bone like for instance the helmet is just attached to the head joint so when the head joint moves the helmet moves along with it it doesn't deform along with the neck or anything like that uh, as opposed to these things like the loincloth or the shirt which as the bones move you want the body to move with it so now when we go in here and say um, male walk the accessories on oh and there's cloth on here too so you can see the neck cloth here and then the loin cloth here um, if we go back to our a pose with our character selected we can go in here and we can say hey I want to mess with my collision shapes and then you go in and you dictate where your collision shapes are so as cloth is bouncing around uh, it'll hit the collision and make it look like it's colliding with your object um, I don't think there's anything else super fancy with this. And of course, you can go through here. Oh, here's the song. We can go and do a... Um, let me see. Give me a second. I'll put an animation in here. So there are animations you can just grab. So for example, 
Uh, and here I got some animations. So we'll say animation, motion plus, or motion, studio mocap. These ones kind of stick them way out in the space. We can just bring them back. We'll say barehanded. Sorry. Want them in the light so we can see them. And then again, we'll put on this lock so he kind of stays locked here. There we go. So now. Bam. And then now if we want to have the, so right now the axe is an accessory that's parented to his spine, the same thing as his backpack. However, if we want to go in here and say, hey, we have a single-handed, uh, it's a blade. Yeah, we'll see how it works. So here's a single-handed animation. And I want to parent his axe so that it's in his hand. So I'm going to say select this axe here. I'm going to pick the parent here, so we're going to say pick parent U, that'll choose the R hand, and then I just need to move the axe, and you can also edit the pivot of the axe, it's, it's set in the mid, kind of mid handle here, which is fine I think, uh, come on, All right, so we have an animation, single-handed animation with our ax parented to our hand. And then now when we play it, it'll have cloth. Very serious. And this is where we get into, if you're just joining us now, hold on, let me sign in. Thought I forgot I was doing something. On my YouTube channel. Uh, the character creator in ZBrush, this will walk you through, hey, here's how I make my ZBrush model, not using the base mesh with facial animation, but taking any ZBrush model you have and bring it in here, accu-rigging it, posing it, creating cloth uh, with weight maps, etc., etc. That's all here. And then as I update this project, it'll probably end up on my YouTube channel and here. Might be a little bit easier to go through and find, so I'll put a link here as well. Okay, so we have our character here. Uh, we can even export this as an FBX and, uh, you know, go and render this in an external program or send us the engine uh, as part of the animation set for this character if we wanted to. Um, what else can we do? We've got a cool character, a cool pose. Uh, oh, so saving, well, let's first, damn, so many things. Um, let's look at fantasy. Anything in here that's kind of fun? Sword slash. Is there like an axe? Let me see if there's a axe animation we could use. Yeah, we can pound our chest. There we go. So chest to thump with our axe. We're gonna download this uh, without skin. FBX thirty download. And then let's go back to our A pose. So I've already actually got one in here, I think. Perform, list editor. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, go in here to motion. We'll say import animation. That's on my downloads. There's actually a couple in here. We'll do climbing, we'll do climbing a rope. Because that was a fun one. I actually used for this one, I'll show you in just a second. When I 3D printed him. Oh no, that's weird. Um, that's okay, I have, I know where I can grab that. Um, yeah, so I ended up, well, I guess I can show you while we're waiting for that. Let's see, recording, character creator. Second. 
So we haven't talked about the variant yet, but what we ended up doing was taking this guy and morphing him out so that we could make a giant from him and then obviously decked him out in his own clothes and his own weapon and his own helmet. Um, but even doing that, we can share the clothing between the goblin and the troll. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Super easy. If I can get this to work, let's go ahead and grab one of those animations here. So I'm going to go to my custom external motion climbing rope. Huh. So here's one from Mixumo. Just going through here. Um, and I actually used this one. So what I did was I started here and then said, okay, let's go model, uh, edit this. So we'll go in here to edit pose real quick. And I'll say, grab this. And I want him to kind of be looking down like this way let's hit e one more time so we're local there you go and uh so this is where we can go in let's make these size and opacity here so go through here edit the pose however you'd like you can take any of these and you can you know fan out the fingers or close them in the fist really quickly uh the facial animations that we've talked about too we can go in here and say edit facial and we go in here to expression. Of course, we want him to be a little scared. So uh, you know, dial in any of these. And then you can go through and change the individual shapes as much as you'd like. Um, so we'll dial in the face here. And then what else would we do? I think that's about it. And then export this. Um, I can go ahead and load that up too. So we've already talked about the high res and baking stuff out. And then... Goblin variant 3D print. Oh, that's my 3D print setup file. Sorry about that. Um, where that actually is, it's in the print folder. Sorry. Uh, decimated. So here is the exact same process that I just told you about. Went through and moved the low res versions. Uh, you know, all of my objects had subdivision history, so I could send those over rig those to the skeleton, animate it, change my poses just like I showed you, uh, and then eventually decimate these down and do a Boolean operation, set key registration in here so I could print these out as their own individual files, uh, making sure there's hand, or there's, there's a hole through the hand, and then also putting a hole through the middle of the feet here and out the bottom. And like I said, uh, making sure anything that needs to be print separately has the right booleans in here so I can print those out and then stick them back together. Uh, anything else weird like the arm here will be plugged in to the body here. So the arm gets plugged into the body here. And then the shoulder pad gets plugged in. So there's a little key registration there into the arm here, like so. So eventually, uh, where would I have put all this stuff? Sorry. Uh, character creator goblin. I've been doing so much stuff lately. Source 3D print. There it is. So <laughs> here is the 3D print of this guy. He's about his whole body put together is probably about the size of my hand. Uh, but there's the the head here, and then the drain holes that goes under the body, and then the feet. And there's a quarter for scale. And yeah, so there's all the pieces there, and then you can put those together. So that is the 3D print file sent to my Elegoo Mars 3 Pro. If you want to know a little bit more about printing, I do have a bit of stuff on my channel for that. I have Leechy Slicer uh, tutorials and then also anything. They'll send me printers occasionally where I'll do like Elegoo Mars 3 Pro, Benny 5, Elegoo Mars 2. Scan Ferret, clean up. Another thing too we've done in the past where we can go through and like clean up our 3D models, get them ready for print send those slice files over and then print out your model. Um, so yeah, we've talked about that. We talked about stitching. It's eight o'clock. We've talked about, you know what? Let's try it one more time. I don't know why it wouldn't have worked. Let me see, motion, pose, a, nope. A pose, it should work just fine. I've never had it not work. Import animation, standing taunt. There we go. So this is, this is what we're doing. And then also our scene here, oh, our ax. Really quickly, since we close the file out, we're going to say one more time. Uh, you know, let's do this. Pick our parent here to our hand, move into place. And 
then I just want to show you really quickly how easy and awesome it is to do the variant before I leave. Oh no, come on, get in there. Okay, so X parented hand, great. Go back to our chest thump. <laughs> Oh, so scary and mean, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's our whatever. Now, if going back here really quickly, A pose, let's get rid of all of this stuff. We'll strip it back down. And again, I'm gonna have all of this stuff up on my YouTube channel this week, but going back in here with our morph, I literally just took this guy and turned him into a giant. So shrank his head down, went into the body morphs here, said scaled him up quite a bit uh, went in here and gave him a little bit more of a muscular kind of feel and then again just sent that back over to zbrush sent it back and forth back and forth back and forth until i got to Print. There we go, accessories. Exact same process we just covered for the goblin, minus this part, and even the skin detail. So remember, in my ZBrush file, when I go Z this over, it's moving the low res verts around, and then my details follow. I kept the exact same details from the troll uh, to my giant. So when I, when I open this up, keep that in mind. Accessories. Oh, one more thing I wanted to show you was changing out the eyeballs and the skin and stuff. So this guy has different accessories. You know, he's got um, a big old jawbone of some creature here as his weapon. Uh, he's a giant, so his, his clothing's a little more rudimentary and crude. But uh, yeah, exact same deal. Uh, again, just morphed the goblin into this character, basically, and then baked my maps, and then he still has all of his... Um, let's do a saw spin around. Nice flowing cloth there. Whee! Little peek. And... Uh, so there's our character, facial animation works fine. Um, like I said before, you can go in here to content and change like eyeballs out as well. Let's say pose, a pose, template, sorry. Actor, eyeballs. So you can just go through here and say, I want brown eyes, no problem. Uh, same thing with the teeth, you can swap teeth out, uh, and, and these clothing too. So when I go in here to custom, and then I say, uh, we're not under props, accessories here. So we have head accessories, we have the goblin helmet and the, and the horns here. So if I'm like, hey, you know what? I don't want any of this stuff anymore. I want him to be a goblin version. So I can go through here, I can say, hey, grab me his helmet. Uh, his head was a little bigger proportionally than this guy's head. So I'm gonna, I, this is one thing I am gonna have to change is just go through here and kind of fit. Now it's, it's already gonna choose the right, correct bone because they share the same bone. So we're good there. So we'll go ahead and put the helmet on here. Uh, arm, go ahead and put a shoulder pad on here. We're fine. And then a cloth, we also were able to save out our clothing. So for example, that shirt the goblin was wearing the pants, the skirt, we'll go ahead and swap out for the goblin, eh, we'll go ahead and leave that alone. Shoes, we'll put his goblin shoes on there. Gloves, there was a goblin glove. And others, I didn't save the axe out, but that'd be easy enough to bring back in. Or I actually have underneath template here. I think we've got one in here. Accessory, other, light armor. Yeah, I think we've got an axe. So we can actually grab that axe. A little Viking axe there. Cool, so here's our goblin version of our um, character here. And in fact, if I want to swap his skin out, this will be interesting. I go in here to Substance Painter, Update Textures from Substance Painter. I can hop back into um, the goblin body. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's make sure I have 
here. Uh, and then again, Substance Painter, Update Textures from Goblin Body, yes. So whatever I exported, I can now import onto this guy's body and swap his skin out completely with the Goblin Textures. <laughs> and um, I think everything should still work. So let's go through here. Let's do, do we have a performance climbing a rope? Look at that. Um, there's some conforming we need to do, but first we'll do, let's do, uh, sorry, mail walk. A little bit of a different vibe here. Uh, now for the clothing itself, you're gonna see the boots are kind of coming through. It's easy to fix. So we can go back through here, we'll select the boots and we'll go to conform calculate collision you can even go in here to so that I'll go through and look at the feet and calculate the collision you can go in here to cloth layer settings and you can say hey the boots actually need to be first and then the pants go above and over the boots and then the belt goes above the pants so you can just layer things uh, with how they are on the character and then you can fix how it conforms to your character. Um, yes. So now that he has, you know what, let's do this. Let's have a little bit of fun. Content, animation. Scene, select your character. There we go. Let's see if we can get this to work. <laughs> Almost. So I would need to figure out uh, where this would need to be placed in order to work appropriately with this animation. Something like here. Let's actually scale this down just a bit. Something like this. So now, big axe. Ooh. Boom. Ta da. So there's my big axe uh, goblin giant <laughs> person. Anyway, uh, I think that was it. I think that was all I wanted to show. Sorry, I was a little bit disjointed. But anyway, we get caught up with here and I'll head on out. Um, Yes, mass polygroup, retopologize. Yes, smooth brush. Um, models to max and from max from ZBrush. Go Z. Go Z should, you should be able to find it, but if not, you can always just export as an FBX and then import it as an FBX or OBJ if Go is not working. Um, using the base character mesh topology and character. Rating. Yes, and in fact, this one is too. So if I go back in here to the wrinkle check. And we'll do, you know, we'll do one more stupid thing. Um, so he's got his expression wrinkles turned on. Uh, okay, so, yeah, go through, do your stuff, and then let's let him get really... What's this by frame still? Yeah, and so I could go through here and fix a little bit of those shapes. I can go in here to edit mesh and I can kind of move the verts around to kind of fix what needs to be fixed. But another thing we can do is let's say, uh, let's go in here to content. Let's go in here to skin, skin base, default male. Uh, ignore the head normal texture because I want to keep my baked normal information. So he's all super grizzled. There we go. So now he's just back to being a normal dude. However, he did retain uh, my head normals. So now what we can do is, and again, under content, template, item, uh, let's see. Q 
give it a sec. Oh, sorry. I had a bunch of stuff on here still. So slim jeans will keep these things we don't need. You know what? You can keep the helmet, dude. Uh, okay, so we got some jeans on there. Let's go in here to hair. Um, let's do the entire... You can do hair group, which is like eyebrows and mustache. All separate. This is all together. Actually, you know what? We'll get rid of the helmet because i got to see that hair. And then back here. Let's do hair group. Beard. It's the cowboy. Yes. Okay. Uh, content. What else? We want accessory. Head accessory. We gotta give him some shades. And his head's a little small. some shoes. Actually, let's do... Shoes. to edit mesh these over because his feet are kind of weird too on my giant um i guess i could sorry just having fun let's say There we go. Kind of got a little Pedro Pascal look. <laughs> a little, little thicker maybe, but uh, yeah. Anyway, just having fun. Um, yeah, spaced apology. Cool, cool, cool. Um, give us some tips. 3D printing, how to set up the keys. Yeah, um, you know what, Thursday, I have to stop today, but uh, Thursday I should be streaming on my channel. So I'm streaming on Pixelogic's channel now. On my YouTube channel, I'll put this on there, as well as uh, we'll talk about 3D printing. You know what? I'll set up the giant for 3D printing on Thursday. How about that? Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, you can absolutely use it for game animations. Um, <laughs> I would say, to be fair, none of what I've ever done in my entire life has been art. It's been uh, just messing around. Um... Game animations, cloth physics, and such. Uh, I'm not sure of a specific program, really, any animation program where the cell will have that stuff. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Cool. And uh, like I said, I'll see you on Thursday on my channel, and we'll talk about the 3D printing process, which uh, in this case, so here's this one 3D printed, and then I think I also have troll. Hmm, maybe this one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so we've already printed out this guy. Now we need to get this one all prepared for 3D printing. Uh, and again, I'm not an expert by at that by any stretch, but um, you know, we'll probably pop his left leg off, his right leg off. I'll see if I can't do a nice seam around his arms. Uh, not for you would normal real people would do that for mold making purposes for me it's so I can have a big enough print on my 
limited uh, print bed size. You know, so that's actually a bigger concern of mine is getting those arms separated off. Ugh, we'll see if we can get that to work. But anyway, that'll be the that'll end up being the final 3D printed thing is this right here. Um, yeah, there we go. Cool. Um, <laughs> true, all true. And what 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 really is an artist? Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. I will catch you on the flip side.